Welcome to another new tutorial series. This time we're going to be going over cloud variables. I'm going to start with an introduction in theory. We'll go on to sort of how to create them and then the components and logic nodes which allow you to manipulate them. Let's start with the theory. I'm going to start with what even is a cloud variable. And so a cloud variable is a variable. And by that I mean a piece of text, potato, a number, three, that's a good number, a color, uh, any primitive data type is supported. There's a full list on the Neos wiki, and I'll link that in the video description, but it's stored within the Neos cloud. What do I mean by the Neos cloud? The Neos cloud is a set of web services that run sort of above in the cloud, above Neos running on your computer, and uh, stuff is pulled from them. An example here is any messages you send to your contacts. Those are stored in the cloud, and then your Neos client looks at the cloud and says, hey, give me the messages, and they come down. So if I send hello to you now, it goes through Neos's cloud. So cloud variables are stored up in the cloud, and that gives us several advantages over other types. So there are dynamic variables as well, which is uh, one of the other sort of types of variables on this level. I will link uh, in the video description my dynamic variable series. Um, I may, uh, in some cases, draw parallels between cloud variables and dynamic variables. When I do that, I'll be very clear to use the word dynamic and cloud so that you're very clear. If you do get uh, confused, do leave a comment in the uh, uh, video comments and I'll get back to you and explain what's going on or what the differences are in a clearer manner. So because cloud variables are stored in the cloud, it means that we have uh, an amazing feature which is that they synchronize and persist across sessions. What do I mean by that? So when I make a value in Neos and I don't save it to my inventory and I don't save the world, let's say I spawn the value three as a logic node or maybe even a piece of text in the middle of the world, when I close that world, that value is gone. Even if I store it in a dynamic variable, even if I store it in a logic node or whatever, if I don't save that item or that object to my inventory or save the world, it's gone. Where a cloud variable, it persists across those sessions. So if I were to say, hey, cloud variable three, and I saved it as a cloud variable. If I read that variable in a month's time, a year's time, whatever, it would still be three. So that lets you do sort of persistence of values and settings and all sorts. Common use cases you might have for cloud variables are things like uh, graphical settings in a world, sort of like high, medium, low, or maybe, you know, should mirrors be on by default? Should cameras be on by default? What's the, um, what's the EXP or level of a user if it's a sort of RPG game? What's their favorite fruit, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to store. Um, you can also do things like version detection systems. People have done that. So they release a gadget and the gadget's got version two and then they release version three and it reads a cloud variable, which remember persists across everything and says, yo, there's an update to my gadget. Please go get it. That's another uh, thing that they're being used for initially. Cloud variables are very new. So we're still seeing applications for them change and develop and emerge all day, sort of every day. I see new ideas and new concepts of using them pretty much all the time. Uh, so I'm excited to see what you're going to do with them. If you come up with a cool, cool use, drop that in the comments too. So that's what they are. Let's now go for sort of how you use them and how you define them. And uh, we'll talk more about the theory. I do apologize that this is a theory video, but I do need to get theory and sort of specifics and terminology out of the way. Otherwise, we might get lost and stuck further down the line. Let's go ahead and go into the theory. We're going to talk about the structure of a cloud variable to start with, and then we'll talk about how you create them and then how you use them in components, which will probably be a sort of part two, part three. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm going to spin around here and hop into Smooth POV. The reason behind that is because I've got a huge amount of visual aids behind me. And the reason those visual aids exist is because the feature is new and uh, sometimes I make mistakes too. So the visual aids help me and I'm going to be bringing some of them on camera. A lot of these visual aids actually come from the Neos Wiki. This is one of the first features on Neos where we've got a huge wiki page of documentation about this feature. Pretty much the moment it launched, we had a very rough wiki page the first day it launched. And then as the feature stabilized and people started using it and coming up with questions, more and more members of the community have edited it. I've just... Uh, uh, done a sort of extensive um, re-juggle and reformat of the page to make things a little bit clearer. And uh, the reason I did that is to actually provide some of these visual aids and also provide some examples on that page of sort of, you know, tables and charts, etc. of how things work. So uh, look for that. I'll put it in the video description so you can take a look at it and look forward to more features having wiki content the moment they launch as well. We have a huge community of people on the Discord in the wiki channel who write up all sorts of pages every day about nodes and, and features that exist. So uh, always check that wiki. I know people um, thought it was empty um, in the past and it was empty in the past. Now we're giving it up to date and we're trying to get it sort of complete in terms of sort of a page for each node, etc. So I'm bringing over the first visual aid I've got here. And this describes what I call the sort of cloud variable hierarchy. This one is super important to explain because this is a sticking point for some new users. I've said more new users to cloud variables, that is. So what we have at the top here is we have a variable definition. So a variable definition 
um, is the uh, settings about a variable. So its name, its data type, its permissions, etc. Um, that is defined by the owner of the variable uh, definition. And we'll talk about that more when we talk about how to create them and what a variable definition is. Underneath that is a set of values. The set of values is for each user. And sometimes that's where we get stuck. So that's the sticking point for new users. They think, oh, there's only one value. Uh, per variable definition. That's not true. There is a value per user. So as an example here, let's go back to that exp or level um, variable I talked about before. And we'll say that we've created a variable definition for level. When we're playing sort of an RPG game, we might have um, different users at different levels. Let's say user one is me and I'm level 10. User two is Fruits and they're level 100. And then user three is you and you're level one because you're brand new to cloud variables here. Whereas Fruits has been playing cloud variables longer than anyone because they made the feature. So that's how that works. And those can expand sort of horizontally or however you want to visualize it um, for as many users as you really want, as many as you can store. There's probably a limit. Um, I'm not quite sure what that limit is in terms of user values for a variable definition. There is a limit on uh, definitions though. Uh, if there's an update on the definitions or the limits, I will uh, put that on the wiki. I won't be able to update this video unless it gets su uh, sufficiently distant, and then I'll go ahead and update it completely. To help you visualize this, I've got an example. Uh, the example variable definition is here. What I've done here is I've created a little chart. This is one of the, the, the wiki-based content. So here we have the uh, favorite fruit variable definition, and we've got a uh, four values for that. So we've got you, Fruxius, it's all based on user IDs, by the way. So you, Fruxius, is in his uh, favorite fruit is strawberry. If this isn't actually your favorite fruit, Fruxius, next to the little shifty, I apologize for that. Go ahead and hit the wiki if you want. It's just an example. I don't mean anything by it. So again, you'll see here we've got a value for each user, and it's a different value. So this is a favorite fruit variable. Fruits is strawberry, Nexlin's orange, Shifty's pineapple, and I'm blueberry. And so you could keep that going for sort of all, all users in Neos theoretically if you'd like to. So there's an example of how that's structured, and that will actually help us uh, later when we talk about how to create them. So that is the uh, structure of a uh, the hierarchy and also an example of what one looked like. Let's now go into um, how things are sort of orchestrated and organized. So I'm going to bring in another visual aid, which I believe is that one. Yep, here it is. Make that a little bit bigger. So this again is from the wiki. You can actually see wiki text here and only the edit button and there's also sort of links throughout the page here. So a cloud variable definition is made up of four parts, which like it says here, I will be pretty much reading from this bullet point list, but I'll add some color of my own sort of thoughts as we go. So the first part is a path name. So an example here of this favorite fruit, the path or name would be favorite fruit. I'll talk about more why, why it's called a path in a moment, but you can also see examples here where we've got awesome gadget dot version or party world dot high quality lights. The um, concept here is that you know you make sort of paths or namespaces where awesome gadget or party world is the namespace, and then version or high quality lights is a variable within that sort of namespace. That isn't enforced. You can use whatever you would like there. It's just been the convention between users that have been using them that we use um, periods to de uh, define a value uh, in a sort of namespace or sort of target um, context. Uh, so again, here awesome gadget dot version party world dot high quality lights are two separate variables, but they're, you know, within two separate, you know, namespaces, if you like. Then there's a data type. Now, um, most primitive data types are supported. The list is incredibly extensive. It's on the wiki. It goes through all the number types, more number types than I know what to do with, etc. Do note it doesn't uh, work with any sort of complex type. What I mean by that is anything like user, anything like a logics node or a slot, anything like that. And the reason behind that is those things don't exist outside of sessions. A cloud variable needs to have a value that exists outside of sessions. It needs to transcend sessions, transcend worlds, etc. So it can't be a reference to a user, it can't be a reference to a slot, and it can't be a reference to sort of anything within a world such as a, a mesh or material. You can actually can refer to a mesh and a material, but you refer to a URL rather than um, you know a mesh object itself. So do know that. There are permissions on a cloud variable definition. The permissions control um, who can write and read from that. I'll go over permissions in a little bit more detail in just a moment. Um, and then there's a default value. And the default value basically means like, hey, if we haven't specified a favorite fruit, what should it be? So example of favorite fruit, because fruit would be a string, we might, which is just a piece of text, we might say is unknown. We don't know what your favorite fruit is. Or you might say, hey, if, if you don't have a favorite fruit, it's orange, you know, just because you want to. Uh, it, doesn't really matter. It's up to you for the, the applications that you go through. Um, definitions are a good thing to note here, and we'll talk about it more when we come across limits. Definitions can also be registered against a user um, or a group. A little typo there. I'll correct that in a moment. But uh, 
they can be registered against a user or a group. Um, and what that means is a user can own a, de a variable definition or a group can own a variable definition. If you register a definition against a group, you have extra um, capabilities. There are additional permission capabilities and there are higher limits available for a um, group declared variable rather than a user declared variable. If you're not sure what a group is, I haven't done a tutorial on groups, but there is some information on the wiki there, including how to create them. So I'll link those pages in the video description and I'll do some information on a group maybe as a quick video. There isn't um, um, a lot to talk about there, but there is you know, stuff, stuff to talk about, so maybe I'll make a video for that one. I'm going to go on to permissions now. We're almost there on, uh, on, on theory. I, I do apologize. It's just we need to get stuff done. Actually, let's cover limits first. So here are the limits, and this is what I talked about, how groups have um, better or higher limits. So for users, you can only create 256 um, variables. You also cannot, variable definitions, sorry, you also cannot delete those variable definitions. Um, and that means that you need to be very careful about that. I've already used up two definitions, and I'm probably going to use up three or four more um, in the course of this tutorial, but I'm going to make them generic sounding such that we can use them again if you'd like. If you have a group, though, you've got 8,192. Not quite sure why that number specifically was chosen, but I, I would uh, presume it's something to do with the, the storage pattern that's being used on the, uh, the back end of cloud variables there. So do keep this in mind. Uh, you also can't delete them right now. I've mentioned that before, but you cannot delete them right now. So do, do keep an eye on what you're creating and be sure when you do create them. So there you go, that is the limits. Last bit of theory that we've got here is the permissions. Now this is just a big chart and I'm, I do apologize for putting it up on the screen. It's, it's more for, for me than you. Do not worry about seeing it. Like I said, it's all on the wiki. Um, uh, maybe I'll actually just uh, head into third person here and, and just talk about it because uh, that might help a little bit better than just showing up a huge wall of text at you. There's a blank screen to look at. Cool. So if you want to see that, like I said, it's linked in the uh, wiki. I'll put it in the video description. Um, actually, I, I will. I will show it. I uh, apologize if this is a little bit harder to read, but it does let you follow along. So there are two types of, uh, well, the true parts of a permission. There's the access type or the access permission, and then there's the uh, group or type of permission. And those form together to form an overall permission type. You can see an example here with this uh, uh, test color permission uh, variable, which has the read, write, list permission for anyone. So you can see up here that that is the access permission combined with the permission type slash group. So the access permission define what a user can do. Um, so the permission types there are uh, access permissions are even our read, which allows people to read the value, write, which allows them to write a value, list, which allows them to list all the values that exist within um, uh, a variable. They also allow them to look at the variable definition and all, which allows you to do everything. Beneath that are the uh, permission types or groups. These get a little bit complicated, so do bear with me. I'll give you some examples of what to do. I'll also link you to um, an amazing um, weekly update by Frixius where he talks about some examples, including sort of the lights and the level in the XP that we talked about. Uh, so we have a lot of these, and I'm going to go through them as quickly as I can. Like I said, this is just theory. So we've got definition owner, which is a, the first one here, which means only the group or user, let's just say group or user, I will edit that again, um, can read, write, or list um, the uh, the uh, variable. And that is defined by the access permissions at the top. So uh, the definition owner is the person who... Um, actually, is the group, because only group can use this one, um, which is... One moment, sorry. Only the definition owner can uh, do that action. So if you set definition owner on read, it means only the definition owner can read it. What do we mean by definition owner? In that case, we mean the person who created that variable. In the case of definition owner and definition owner unsafe, it is only usable um, with group defined variables. Like I said earlier, the uh, limits and permissions on a uh, group variable versus a user variable are different. If you're interested in getting a group, like I said earlier, there's information on groups linked in the video description, or uh, you can wait for a group related video, which like I said, won't be that much, but it will be uh, you know some content for you to take a look at eventually. So uh, we also need to talk about now, because the next one is definition owner unsafe, we need to talk about unsafe versus safe. So there's a concept in Neos of uh, safe and unsafe spaces. I need to explain what that is. Uh, you will see this come up in other contexts as well, other than cloud variables. So I'm going to explain it now, which is uh, unsafe means anywhere in a public world. 
And we mean that it's unsafe because um, I could pull out a developer tooltip or some logics, etc., and I can sort of, you know, pretend to be you or write stuff on your behalf or do stuff like that. You may have noticed that lots of stuff that you want to do that is more secure can only occur within your Neos dash, which loads in front of you. That's an example of a safe context because I can't see that as another user in the world. I can't inspect it. It's completely hidden. It's in another sort of um, overlaid sort of shadow realm, if you like, that's on top of you called user space and only you can see that. That's also why um, when you hit things like a tip jar, when you want to tip someone some NCR, it opens a window in that safe context space so no one else can sort of force you to send money to them. Or when you are sending the messages, whatever, again, that's in that safe space. Um, and what that allows you to do is that allows you to sort of specify those variables within things like dash facets. I go over facets in my UX tutorial series, so I'll link that on the video description as well. But that's what we mean by a safe space, and then an unsafe space being that sort of public world or anywhere. Uh, you will get used to it as you start looking at it. Um, you know, think about sort of who can see what I'm doing right now. So if you're in a world and you're editing your avatar, anyone can see what you're doing. Anyone can come up and sort of drag a, a logics node around, provided they're builder, of course. It doesn't sort of overlay on that, but they can still see what you're doing, even if they're not builder. So that is an unsafe space. Whereas in your dash with a facet or with your UI, where you're sending credits or sending messages, that is a safe space. No one else can see it. So that's the definition of safe and unsafe. Moving onwards to the other permission groups, we have variable owner, um, safe and unsafe. And that means only the person who owns the variable's value can uh, read, write, or list it, etc. Uh, by that we mean the, let me sort through my diagrams here, that one, there we go. By that we mean the person who owns this value. So again, this one I believe was Fruxius. Only Fruxius would be able to read and write to this value if I'd set read and write to variable owner. Um, and again, with um, the uh, version that doesn't have unsafe on the end, they would only be able to read um, or write that within a facet or you know any other uh, safe space. And with unsafe, they'll be able to read and write to it uh, from a world, from a gadget, from a um, piece of UI within a world. Beneath that is the uh, last one there, which is anyone. Anyone allows anyone to do anything. Um, this is recommended for reading. It is not recommended for writing um, because if it's uh, anyone for writing, it means anyone can change anyone's value, which sometimes gets a little bit of a mess. Uh, you will see anyone crop up. Um, there are some test variables which Fuxius created um, on the, I think believe on the Neos group or it might be on his user. I've forgotten just for the moment, but I'll link them in the video description so you can play around with those ones. Those allow anyone to sort of rewrite from them and they're really good ones to sort of try out without having to just register your own definition. I've uh, whizzed through those at quite a speed of late and uh, I'm not quite sure how this looks because I'm currently recording, you know, I'm in VR. It does look like, you know, I'm looking at the right areas, etc. But uh, do remember it is linked in the video description. It's just sort of an audio record to talk about them. Also do remember that this is a new feature that's happening here. There are new permission groups and permission types and restrictions and limits being changed sort of with every release right now. I did want to get some information out, but I may re-record this video um, later on in the, uh, in the, the course of Neos, etc. If, you, by the way, if you ever see a video that's out of date, just leave me a comment. I add it to a re-record list and then sort of once a month I, uh, I go through and re-record. It isn't my favorite thing to do, but it's important to do as Neos grows. So do let me know in the video comments if this is out of date and I'll get a re-record on the list and on the books to do. So there you go, that is P missions. Um, we're going to go ahead and cut it off here because we've talked for 18 minutes about sort of the theory of cloud variables. Um, do let me know what you think, or if you have any questions, do read that wiki page. Like I said, it's going to be more up to date with uh, corrections and edits as Neos changes. Um, and I'll get back to you with part two soon, where we'll talk about how to create those definitions and how to use them within the world. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.